So this is the uh, uh, closing of the Fearless series. And so Pastor asked me to uh, close out this series, which is the fear of stretching. Or uh, also on the topic of overcoming fear of dreaming big dreams. Amen. Say with me. Overcoming, overcoming fear, fear of, of dreaming, dreaming big dreams. Big dreams. Amen. Have you ever wanted more than anything else to say or do something that was weighing on your heart but was stopped by fear? At one time or another, everyone has bumped up, bumped up against its cold and icy grip. Fear can stop us from having the courage to do what we know is right and from achieving our dreams. The good news is, that God knows about this force in our lives. And we can overcome it when we rely in him. So what is fear? Fear can present itself as fear of lack, death, loneliness, people, authority, commitment, heights, germs, airplanes, dogs, cats, failures, rejection, being laughed at and even the fear of being attractive. In fact, there is a fear called phobophobia. Has anyone heard of phobophobia before? Yeah, no? Well, in today's class, no, I'm just kidding. Phobophobia, which is the fear of being afraid. It can shut and paralyze us if we let it. It's been said that fear stands for false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. So that's how the devil works. He presents thoughts and ideas in our head that completely immobilize us from going forward when all along it's false evidence appearing real. Satan's main goal is to intimidate you and rob you of God's best in your life. The word of God is so vital in our lives. The more you read the word for yourself and let it settle inside you, a light goes off and you begin to see things you couldn't see in the dark. You begin to see that you do not need to be afraid. You have nothing to fear. Satan works through fear, just like God works through faith. It takes fear to activate Satan's power in your life, just as it takes faith to activate God's power. One of my favorite scriptures that brings so much confidence and peace in me is Isaiah 41, 10. And I'm reading uh, in the Amplified Version that says, Fear not. There is nothing to fear. Why should we fear not? The very next part of that verse says, For God is with you. Say that with me. For God is with you. No matter how alone you may feel, you're not alone. God is with you. I love the quote by Henry Ford that says, One of the greatest discoveries a man makes, one of his greatest surprises, is to find he can do what he was afraid he couldn't do. Fear is, is just, isn't just a feeling. It's actually a powerful spirit. It preys on our mind. As we study the Word of God, we can see that this evil spirit isn't from God. And it can be defeated. Apostle Paul was encouraging the young pastor, Timothy, because apparently he was lacking confidence and struggling with fear. We find in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, that says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So the idea is that, that Paul is presenting here is that God gives us a spirit of courage. Say with me, courage. courage. I never realized until I began to study God's word that my biggest struggles I faced in life, all, all of them, were rooted in fear. Insecurity, low self-esteem. Rejection, a poor self-image, all of them were rooted in fear. So let, let, it make, let, let me make it clear, Hope, that fear does not come from God. It does not come from God. 
During my elementary years, I, uh, I met with a principal. She pulled me to the office, and she told me that I have to keep you behind a grade because you were you weren't, you weren't doing well with um, your math and your writing, and, and, and she just made this huge list of things that I was not good at. And then she said something that marked my life when I was young. She said, you, she said that you will not, or you don't have the potential to go to college or to a university. And that's a powerful statement from someone that I looked up to. Amen? How many know that there's power in your words? Amen? Life, death, blessing, cursing. Come on, right? Amen? So that just impacted me in a big way. So growing up, I was like, I started to believe the lies. I started to believe that I wasn't able to, I wasn't good enough. I wasn't uh, articulate enough. I wasn't smart enough to go to college. And fa fast forward uh, during my high school years, I went to this youth retreat. And at the youth retreat, the youth pastor was talking about the power of uh, forg forgiveness. And in that youth retreat, the Lord spoke to me and ministered to me in a powerful way. And he told me, Ray, you, in order for you to face, to, to let go of this, the issue that you have with fear and, 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 and not able to, uh, to have that passion and desire to go to school, uh, you have to face your fears head on. And you have to forgive that principle. You have to pray for her. Pray for her? Yeah, pray for her. In fact, he said, bless her. Bless her family. And so when I started to do that, when I, when I did that, I felt the love of God come on, on upon me like I've never felt in my life. I felt the love that she had, that, that he had for her. That's, the Lord allowed that. And it was a beautiful experience. So fast forward, the Lord ministered to me. I was set free from that bondage. I ended up going to the university that I always wanted to go, Oral Roberts University in Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. I, amen. Bless God. And a couple years after that, I ended up getting my master's in business administration. And you would think school would stop there, right? And I'm currently attending Regent University for my theological studies and uh, practical theology. And so... I decided not to let the voices, hurt that voice, dictate to me what my destiny was. Amen. Not allowing me to achieve my dreams, amen, of going to school and seeing God manifest himself in a powerful way in my life and in my family. So, um, God is good. Amen. God is good? All the time. In Joshua 1, I love reading about the... Uh, the story of Joshua. It's, it's, to me, it's one of those stories where it's, it's, Joshua was someone who was stretched in ways that, that many people haven't been stretched. And so in Joshua 1, Joshua was installed as a leader. We, as we read Joshua 1, it says, After the death of Moses, the sermon of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses, Mo, Moses' minister, Moses, my servant, is dead. That's kind of cut dry. I don't know about you, but when I read that, wow. That's, in other words, Joshua, you got to get it together. All right? You can't live in the past. You can't worry about what happened in the past. You got to get it together because we got stuff to do. Amen? So he says, so now arise, take this place, go over this, the, the Jordan River. So he grew up with his parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, and he grew up in a family that it was an atmosphere of fear and intimidation. So think about it. Moses was dead. Moses was his mentor, his spiritual father. So I, I can just imagine the pain that he was going through seeing his, his spiritual father passed away. And so picture his life for just, just a minute with me. He was 20 years 
as a slave. 40 years wandering in the wilderness with intimidated people. And his mentor is gone. So I want to share with you a couple principles from Joshua, uh, the first chapter of Joshua. If you're going to face fear, you can't inherit your destiny until you surrender your attachment to the past. You got to let go of yesterday if you're going to move into tomorrow. Don't allow your attachment, in other words, Joshua, don't allow your attachment to Moses limit and define your faith. Joshua had to move forward. Say with me, move forward. God, the second point is, the second principle is, God has prepared a blessing to you, but you must be willing to get up and walk in it. He required a man and the people to be willing to walk toward the blessing of God. Verse 2 says, arise, take this, his place, and go over the Jordan. Being brave, which is the third principle, being brave requires us to face our fear of abandonment, our fear of rejection, and our fear of failure. Very often we are afraid of moving forward because of the what-ifs. What if, if I'm being rejected? What if I'm, someone is speaking about me or laughing at me? What if I, if I try to fail and it doesn't work? I'm not defined by the choices and the behavior of other people. I got to be defined by what God says. Verse 5 and 6 in chapter 1 says, Be strong, confident, and of good courage, for you shall... Cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only you be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all that the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to, your, to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. That, that phrase, good courage, in the Hebrew was translated from, English to, uh, from, from Hebrew to English as brave, bravery. So he's calling us to be what? Brave. brave. Say that with me. Brave. brave. God is calling us to be brave. Last principle that I want to share with you is you fight fear with a plan to achieve your big dreams. How? With any plan comes a strategy. Say strategy. Strategy. I'm going to share with you four strategies. The first one is say with me, build your confidence and God's love for you. Amen. Why? Tina Turner asked the question so eloquently, what's love got to do with it? <laughs> Don't be singing the song because I'll be getting in trouble by pastor. <laughs> but God's love will drive out fear. How many know that today? God's love will drive out fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. 1 John 4, 18. In other words, the more you get to know God, the more confident you become in his love. The more confident you become, the less fear you have. When you go out on your first date, you don't give someone your heart immediately on your first date. At least you're not supposed to. <laughs> Although, I got to confess, when I met my wife, I was so tempted to do that. Because I knew she, I was going to marry her. So, but anyway, that's another, that's another sermon. That's another teaching. And, uh, so, uh, so you communicate with the, that person, right? So you're sending messages. You're receiving messages. So in time, you are convinced, convinced that you love them. And they love you. So you have confidence in them. So it's the same thing with God. The closer you get to him, the more confident you become, the more confident you become in his promises that he will never leave you and forsake you. That confidence is developed the more you receive his love for you. Second strategy, and say it with me. Build your faith. Say it with me again. Build your faith. Faith and fear are two opposite forces. You are either full of faith or you're full of fear. Fear is the result of listening to Satan, Satan's lies than God's truth. If you are full of fear, that reveals what voice is the loudest in you. 
or to you. In order for anything to live, it has to be fed. If you find a stray dog and you give him a, a bowl of water and some food, he'll be, he'll be back tomorrow. Oh yeah, he'll be back tomorrow. If you feed into the fears that Satan has planted in your, in your mind, they'll stay. You have to starve. Say with me, starve. starve. What you want to die and feed what you want to live. The late Lester Summerall, a well-known uh, missionary and, pa and pastor, said this powerful quote, Starve your doubts and feed your faith. Say with me, starve your doubts and feed your faith. How does faith come? Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing. Oh, that sounded good. Faith comes by hearing. You got to start hearing God's word more than you hear Satan's lies. So the third strategy is, say with me, build up your courage. Faith and faith. Build up your courage. So David found strength in the Lord, his God. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, he found strength in the Lord. So we got to speak courage over ourselves. Some things will never change in our lives until you begin speaking the word over them. These are powerful scriptures. The following are, the, are powerful scriptures that address fear and that I've spoken over my life uh, on a daily basis. First one is, I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. Hmm. He freed me from all my fears. Psalms 34, verse 4. Psalms 23, verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, say with me, I will not be afraid. 1 John 4, verse 18. Such love has no fear. Because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Psalms 27.1 The Lord is my light and my salvation. So why should I be afraid? The Lord is my fortress, protecting me from danger. So why should I tremble and my favorite all time I mean I have many favorites but this is one of my favorites Isaiah 41 10 says fear not there's nothing to fear for I am with you do not look around you in terror and be dismayed for I am your God I will strengthen you and harden you to difficulties yes I will help you yes I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Wow. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Fourth strategy. Say with me. Just do it. <laughs> I won't say that I got that from a famous company. You know, no. Just do it. No matter how we feel. You can't wait for fear to go away. You have to do what God is telling you to do. And you have to trust that God is right there with you holding your hand. You can do whatever God tells you to do. In other words, you got to starve your fears and feed your, feed your faith consistently on a daily basis. Determine today, Hope. Determine today that you will not allow fear to stop God's dreams and plans for your life. Fear not. There's nothing to fear. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight or understanding. And finally, Proverbs 18, 10 says, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man run into it and is safe, high, and strong. We got to face our fears head on. We can't backtrack. We got to face them head on and just trust that the Lord is going to be in front of me, behind me, and beside me. Amen. All heads bowed, eyes closed.